Hello, Christ is risen. Truly he is risen. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias, St. Eurkin Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today's Wednesday, May 10th, 2023, and here are the readings for today. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 14, verses 6 through 18. In those days, the apostles fled to Lystris and Derbe, cities of Laconia, and the surrounding country, and there they preached the gospel. Now at Lystra there was a man sitting, who could not use his feet. He was a cripple from birth, who had never walked. He listened to Paul speaking, and Paul, looking intently at him, and seeing that he had faith to be made well, said in a loud voice, Stand upright on your feet. And he sprang up and walked. And when the crowd saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in Lyconian, The gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. Barnabas they called Zeus, and Paul, because he was the chief speaker, they called Hermes. And the priest of Zeus, whose temple was in the front of the city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates and wanted to offer sacrifice with the people. But when the apostles, Barnabas and Paul, heard of it, they tore their garments and rushed out among the multitude, crying, Men, why are you doing this? We are also men of like nature with you, and bring you good news, that you should turn from these vain things to a living God who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. In past generations he allowed all the nations to walk in their own ways, yet he did not leave himself without witness. For he did good and gave you from heaven rains and fruitful seasons, satisfying your hearts with food and gladness. With these words they scarcely restrained the people, from offering sacrifice to them. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John, chapter 7, verses 14 through 30. Let us be attentive. About the middle of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. The Jews marveled at it, saying, How is it that this man has learning when he has never studied? So Jesus answered them, My teaching is not mine, but his who sent me. If any man's will is to do his will, he shall know whether the teacher is from God or whether I am speaking on my own authority. He who speaks on his own authority seeks his own glory, but he who seeks the glory of him who sent him is true, and in him there is not falsehood. Did not Moses give you the law? Yet none of you keeps the law. Why do you seek to kill me? The people answered, you have a demon. Who is seeking to kill you? Jesus answered them, I did one deed, and you all marvel at it. Moses gave you circumcision, not that it is from Moses, but from the fathers. And you circumcise a man upon the Sabbath. If on the Sabbath a man receives circumcision, so that the law of Moses may not be broken, you are angry with me because on the Sabbath I made a man's whole body well? Do not judge by appearances, but judge with right judgment. Some of the people of Jerusalem therefore said, Is not this the man whom they seek to kill? And here he is, speaking openly, and they say nothing to him. Can it be that the authorities really know that this is the Christ? Yet we know where this man comes from, and when the Christ appears, no one will know where he comes from. So Jesus proclaimed, as he taught in the temple, You know me, and you know where I come from? But I have not come of my own accord. He who sent me is true, and him you do not know. I know him, for I come from him, and he sent me. So they sought to arrest him, but no one lays hands on him, because his hour had not yet come. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee. In today's gospel, we have a continuation of this feast of mid-Pentecost. Remembering that Pentecost at this time really had more to do with gardening and with agriculture than it did with the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the disciples. Nevertheless, from that time between Pascha and Pentecost, there was that point right in the middle, and that's where we are at this time. So our Lord is, again, dealing with the questions of his authority, where he comes from, who gives him permission to speak, 
How does he know what he knows? And he is trying very hard to get them to understand that he is indeed the Son of God, of the Father, and he does the will of the Father, and the words that the Father has given him are the words that he is speaking. So he is speaking with the mouth of someone greater than any prophet, of course, since he is the second person of the Holy Trinity. But he's causing these others to question and to wonder. And he talks about how if they followed what Moses had been given, even about matters of circumcision and so on, they would not seek to kill him because they they would understand at that point that mercy overshadows the law. At God is the point in which justice and mercy meet. That's a hard thing for us to grasp because oftentimes we fall on the side of justice just as justice. We want everyone to get their due recompense. If they break the law, they deserve to be punished. Well, our Lord in this case is trying to get the point across that mercy making a man's whole body well is way more important than adherence to any kind of Sabbath rule. And he even points out their own hypocrisy, stating that they perform circumcisions. That's a work. That's something that you have to do. Yet they do it even on the Sabbath. And so they're willing to do a circumcision, part of a ritual practice of the Jewish people at the time, whereas they're not willing to allow the idea that somehow the Son of God would heal a man who was sick. So these are the problems that our Lord faces, questions of authority. So he takes it another step forward, and he talks about how if anyone really understood the word of God within the scriptures, they would understand where he's coming from because they would mesh together. They would sound like each other. Because if you study, study the scriptures, you become saturated in them. And if you seek to do what the scriptures teach, then you can't help but hear an echo of what those teachings are in the teachings of our Lord. And so he says towards the end, you know me and you know where I come from, but I tell you, I've not come of my own accord. He who sent me is true. That's God the Father. And him you do not know. So an accusation. I know him because I come from him and he sent me. This is what our Lord again says about the relationship between him and the Father. And then this next great line. So they sought to arrest him, but no one laid hands on him because his hour had not yet come. So again, in the Gospel of John, we have this statement that Jesus cannot be harmed. He can't even have a hand laid on him until it's that his hour finally arrives. And we heard that referenced right as we were coming into Holy Week. So may God guide us in our own way, as we study the scriptures, as we intensify our prayers, as we hear the words that are spoken in the Gospels and in the law that was given to Moses, as we hear those things, may they harmonize with our own hearts that the things that we do are seeking to serve God as best as we possibly can. Not all of us need to be priests or nuns or anything like that, but we can all do our best to love him with every ounce of our being. And when we do that, we will love our neighbors as ourselves, and we will also find peace and fulfillment in the fulfilling of those tasks. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to this channel. Share this with your friends. And if you want to interact with me, if you have questions, if you want to challenge anything, or you just want to say whatever you'd like to say, please leave a comment in the section there below. In the meantime, I pray that God will bless you and those that you love today and always. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Thank you very much for joining me. You have a great day. Christ is risen. Indeed, he is risen. And God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.